Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome back to Martial Arts Mayhem, where I predominantly talk about martial arts related content within entertainment for the month of May. Big Trouble Little China! Yes! Uh, okay, I seriously gotta control these outbursts, but it's a little difficult because we are talking about another one of my favorite movies of all time in the 80s block of Martial Arts Mayhem. But now I'm also depressed because I know my videos are kind of low quality. This review would be awesome if I had video clips, commentary with JVD, Warpig, Jeremy, and Amber from Evil Genius Entertainment. But one more thing would make this review amazeballs. A six demon bat! That's my knapsack. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> Let's just talk about Big Trouble in Little China. Jack Burton is a big, boastful, and bumbling truck driver who has just won a bet against his longtime friend, Wang Chi. In order to make sure Wang Chi pays him the money that he owes, Jack accompanies him to the airport in order to pick up Wang's arriving fiance. While at the airport, Jack notices Gracie Law, who he instantly tries to kick it with, however, his macking skills get interrupted when a couple of gang members kidnap Wang's fiance. The two follow the criminals to their turf, where they stumble into a gang war and narrowly escape, resulting in Jack's truck getting stolen. To make matters worse, they are informed by the quirky yet cultivated Egg Shen that the two of them have inadvertently gotten caught up into a supernatural struggle that is occurring within and underneath San Francisco's Chinatown. I can't believe that my very first John Carpenter review is happening in martial arts mayhem. John Carpenter is one of my all time favorite directors who I will be talking a lot about in this channel for the months and years to come, Lord willing. This was one of my other favorite movies as a kid where Last Dragon made me feel that I could be a competent martial artist. I also kind of got the hint that I was a little bit of a screw up. And this movie had me believe that even the biggest of screw ups can be a hero. Thus, we have Kurt Russell, one of my all time favorite actors as well, portraying the bumbling yet heroic Jack Burton. He pretty much embodies a Meg Lohan. Well, a Meg Woran is American in Mandarin Chinese. The big, buff, tough talking guy that thinks he can do no wrong, but ends up kind of dropping the ball here and there. What an amazing performance by Kurt Russell, who is actually parodying John Wayne, just like Warpig said in the last Two Fat Drunks review in the Love Hate video. Since we already have a John Wayne parody, why don't we have a Lois Lane parody? Enter Kim Cattrall as Gracie Law, the lawyer who is always in over her head and puts herself in these situations that causes her to be rescued by Jack most of the time, whom she initially can't stand because of his nature. But those are our leading cast members. We have an outstanding supporting cast within Kate Burton. If you don't know that name, you have not been watching any of the Shonda Rhimes TV shows as she had roles in Grey's Anatomy as well as a big major role in Scandal as the Vice President. She plays Margot, a news reporter who is pretty much Gracie's sidekick. She has a great magnetic personality. You can see that in the movie, but they don't really give her much to do. But it's great seeing her, and it's great knowing that she has found later success in TV. We also have Dennis Dunn playing Wang Chi. I am surprised Dennis Dunn did not blow up in Hollywood. He was in a lot of my favorite movies between 1986 and 1987, with this movie, The Last Emperor, and another John Carpenter classic, The Prince of Darkness. We also have the late yet great Victor Wong as Egg Shen. Egg Shen was fucking awesome. I am not as big of a fan of medieval fantasy, but Egg Shen is definitely 
one of my favorite wizards. And this movie, you just gotta see it to see how awesome he is. Victor Wong, who is also awesome in other movies down the road, like Prince of Darkness, Last Emperor, Tremors, but one of my favorite characters in this movie and one of my favorite character actors of all time is James Hong playing Lo Pan. James fucking Hong is one of the most underrated character actors of all time. While this was the role that he is most famously known for, we can't forget his contributions to the Americanized Godzilla King of the Monsters movie as the voiceover actor of Dr. Serozawa, plus his role in Blade Runner, Wayne's World 2, Tango and Cash, Mikhail's Navy, and Kung Fu Panda. He is just an awesome, awesome actor. This movie is not just a martial arts movie. They also added fantasy and adventure in here. Like I said, Ed Shed is a wizard, and so is Lil Pan, and we're dealing with the supernatural as well too. So we got all that mixed in, and plus comedy in this. The comedy in this movie is done so well, and it's not over the top in your face, particularly when it came to Jack. For example, we see Jack dropping his knife a lot, always saying, oh, what the hell's going on over here? And of course, shooting at something and knocking his own self out. Yeah, Jack Burt is pretty incompetent, but courageous and always helpful. Kurt Russell's chemistry with Kim Cattrall, well, it's very hard not to have chemistry with Kim Cattrall, especially these were her really hot days. If you thought she was sexy in Sex and the City, look through the stuff that she did in the 80s. And they had great comedic but romantic chemistry in this movie, and his back and forth with Dennis Dunn as Wang Chi was pretty awesome, kind of resembling the Green Hornet. Victor Wong and James Hong stole the movie as Egg Shen and Lo Pen. Egg Shen with his words of wisdom, yet coming back down to comedic beats, and Lo Pen displaying various sides of someone really tall, mysterious, yet at the same time unsuspecting, yet threatening. We also have the three storms rain, thunder, and lightning. These actors embodied those elements of the storm, where thunder is very loud, bombastic, and physically strong, where you have rain not making as much noise, but always flowing with every motion, and lightning never talks, but always packs a powerful punch, which lightning, by the way, is the inspiration behind Raiden's. So yeah, I've talked about two movies in Martial Arts Mayhem that were direct inspirations for Mortal Kombat, the video game. Top it off, we have gritty martial arts action sequences. The fight choreography is very grounded and had me see Kung Fu utilized in a more realistic fashion. This was how I would envision Kung Fu in an actual setting. Nothing overly fancy when you get to the wire work in the climax of this movie, it is just amazing. Not only seeing the martial arts on display, but it had one of the best aerial fight scenes with Wang versus Rain. I mean, nowadays it doesn't look as impressive, but you look at this aerial fight scene where they're using swords in mid-air fighting each other, it is just outstanding and amazing. Oh, there is so much to say about this movie, but we have Awesome action, great comedy, great supernatural elements, grounded and gritty martial arts action sequences, a great score because one thing about John Carpenter movies, he always has these magical scores. Big Trouble Little China is a maze balls. One of my favorite movies of all time, and yeah, I've already give three 80s blocks maze ball reviews, but things just get more interesting from this point in. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky talking black guy who's just trying to get by. I'll catch all of you later.